And today we're looking at 7.2, climate change, and focusing on the causes and impacts of climate change, as well as trying to predict how climate change will develop over the next few years. Um, the two um, factors here, weather and climate, are linked when it comes to climate change, but we do need to know the difference. So weather is a daily change of temperature, precipitation and pressure. So it might be sunny one day, wet the next day. It will vary over short distances. So it might be raining in Bromsgrove, but it might be sunny in Worcestershire, less than sort of 15 miles away. Um, we can't predict long term and in advance and it can fluctuate widely. So why that is important is because climate doesn't do a lot of those things. So climate is over a longer spread of time. So the climate, we might be talking about the climate for the next 100 years. It has a larger geographical location. It can be global, obviously. We can predict the overall climate. So whilst we might get changes daily um, in the weather, it is actually predictable that you know the temperature is increasing and it slowly changes and slowly creates trends. Both, however, do have some similarities that you need to be aware of as well. They're both affected by the atmosphere, so the air and the temperature of the air, and ocean circulation. They're both affected by forest fires. They're both affected by cloud coverage. They're both affected by volcanic eruptions. And because climate directly links to weather, they're both affected by human activity. So long-term change then, um, is climate change and it has always happened and it will continue to happen with a slow trend of change. So climate change isn't a new thing, it's a long term, constantly slowly developing um, change or trend. And factors that can affect climate change could be one of two main factors. One, the fluctuation of solar emissions, which is a main argument of people who do not believe in anthropocentric climate change. And two, the change in proportion of gases in the atmosphere released by the organisms, which obviously humans can have an impact on. Um, and as you know, there is natural climate change. We need climate change to happen because if it didn't, we would um, be too cold. So we need the greenhouse gas to happen because if it didn't, we'd be too cold. The greenhouse gases insulate our planet um, and the um, humans um, obviously have made an impact on that. So we're now talking about anthropocentric uh, climate change, which is increased due to these gases present here less infrared radiation can escape the planet and we heat up. Now you need to know about a term called global warming potential. So what that means is relative to each other, what is the impact of each gas? So you do not need to be able to recall all of these, but you need to probably know that carbon dioxide actually has the lowest global uh, warming potential compared to the others. Methane is 20 times more powerful, nitrogen oxide a lot higher and a lot higher. But you need to be able to think about it and think about well, why do we study carbon dioxide and methane most if these bottom three have such high levels? Well, if you look, the difference is relatively small. So these ones haven't increased uh, massively over the last 100 to 200 years. And also, if you look at the um, percentage in the greenhouse gases, there's very few of these. Um, whereas these last a lot longer. And the other problems with uh, carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide is going to last up to 200 years in the atmosphere, um, whereas um, methane is going to drop quite quickly. So it'd be sensible to think maybe our early battles against climate change need to be against methane as opposed to carbon dioxide. So one, the next thing we need to look at is, well, why do some people argue against climate change being anthropocentric? So first of all, we need to understand what is debated and what isn't debated. So the things that are not debated, which we know are true, is the greenhouse effect is real. We know the gases are absorbing infrared radiation, preventing from it from escaping to space, and it keeps us warm and insulated on the planet. We also know that greenhouse gases emissions are increasing and we link this to the greenhouse effect. And also the average global temperature is slowly increasing. What is debated, however, is some people don't believe that these two are linked and therefore they think that the temperature isn't linked to greenhouse gases, but is linked to the activity of the sun. And we also don't know how the trend will move forward. And we also don't know what we should actually do about it. 
you know, should we be fighting it or is it a natural change that's going to happen anyway? Some people believe that the global warming actually slowed down in the 2000s, so from 2000 to 2010, because the global temperature didn't appear to go up. And some people said that it means it wasn't happening. Some people would also say that is because that was a slow point of the sun's heating period. So how do we know whether this is correct? What we have to do is look at long term. Climate must be studied long term, so a 10 year period may not be enough. If you look at the um, change in global temperature between 1950 to present day, there is definitely an increase. And also you can see we need to maybe look even further back than that. So here we can see um, periods of warming that have happened over and over again, and periods, and in fact, this, this is carbon dioxide levels, I should say. And you can see here, there's a carbon dioxide increase um, a long, long time ago, 400,000 years ago, one 350,000 years ago, one there, one there. So some people would say, well, actually, this one may be due to humans. It might not be, because these ones, the first four I've circled, there were no humans around, or there weren't enough humans around to cause this impact. So this is a cyclic event that may happen as a result. Obviously, from this graph, though, the big argument is this, that it's never got this high before. Um, and that is possibly due to humans enhancing the impact of climate. And you see here the temperatures have gone up every time the global carbon dioxide levels go up, the temperature follows it closely as a result. But again, in the last 10, in 2010 to 2000, 2000 to 2010, carbon dioxide levels increased, but the temperature did. This also links very closely to methane. So methane levels also have increased with um, and we can see that the um, sea is absorbing more energy and more temperature than ever. So we don't really understand what will definitely happen. So we've looked at this before. So climate change um, is a part of a feedback loop, and it could be that it goes forward using negative feedback, which is actually a good thing, or positive feedback, which is a bad thing. So if it was um, negative feedback, OK, what we would have is the rise in temperatures. Maybe the ice caps will melt. More water then becomes available for evaporation. So we get more clouds, more solar radiation is reflected, and therefore the global temperatures could end up falling. And that would take the temperature back down to what we expect it to be. However, if we have positive feedback, which is a bad thing, what could happen is the ice caps could melt. That exposes dark soil or dark um, deep ocean water. Therefore, more radiation could be absorbed. That means that there's less um, heat reflected and the temperatures will continue to rise uncontrollably. So what the official stance is from the IPCC is that the warming of the climate system is unequivocal, which changes since 1950 have been unprecedented. Carbon dioxide, methane, nitrogen oxide concentrations have increased more than in the last 800 years. That's since 1950. That's 800,000 years as well. Further emissions will cause more change, and to prevent this, we should have substantial reductions in greenhouse emissions. Human influence is 95 to 100% likely to be the cause of climate change since 1950. So what are the potential impacts? Well, we know the global temperature has increased by about 0.85 since 1880. Now, this is from the old spec the specification for um, this course, which is old. They now believe climate warming has got to 1.1 degrees C since that time. And we are obviously trying to keep 1.5 alive. Now, this can have lots of impacts. It can disrupt ocean currents, as we know they're driven by heat if you've done that topic already. We also know sea levels could increase because the ice could melt going into the sea. Um, and remember, I think in a previous lesson, we said if the Antarctica melted, it would cause 70 meters of sea level increase. Polar ice caps are melting, destroying that habitat. Glaciers, which are frozen ice rivers on the land are melting and retreating. Weather patterns are changing, so we're getting increased hurricanes, increased drought, increased flooding in different parts of the world. Food production is being affected, so we're having to change what crops we grow and where we grow them. Some crops are failing because of climate change. 
biodiversity is decreasing, so we're getting increased forests, forest fires, for example, which is wiping out biodiversity, and some organisms can't cope with the heating conditions. Water supply could be reduced because that could link directly to glaciers, which provide us with a lot of our fresh water. If the glaciers melt faster than normal, you'll get a lot of water for a small amount of time, but then the water supply will dry out. Human migration may have to happen because humans may not be able to live in certain parts of the world where we have previously thrived. And economies of different countries are already being hit by this because it's costing a lot of money, for example, to hold the increasing sea levels back. So there are a couple of different climate change models and climate change models are, again, a model. They're trying to be um, pretty show a simplified version of what could happen. They've been trying to predict climate change for nearly 70 years. Early models had very few inputs and were very inaccurate as a result, but modern models include ocean data, atmospheric data, and because of the power of computers now, they're much more accurate. So we're going to have a look at three or four different scenarios of what could happen with different models. So model number one is we could get a direct relationship. So this is the idea that as carbon dioxide levels rise, um, as shown here by the, um, I think the blue, okay, as carbon dioxide levels rise, the temperature will go up and down, but it will follow it quite um, accurately. Next one, we could get a buffering action, which um, means that as carbon dioxide levels rise, instead of the temperature going up, the temperature will sort of maintain, go up and down, but try and resist that change. Obviously, slowly it would still go up, but it may resist the change as a, as a result. Number three could be that carbon dioxide increases as before, and there's a slow change until we hit a tipping point, which will be like there, then the temperature will raise rapidly to a new equilibrium point. There could be no change whatsoever until a tipping point. So we could be thinking this 1.1 degree increase is significant, but it might not be, and it actually might not go up at all. And then all of a sudden it could jump up 10 degrees, which would pretty much eradicate human life on the planet. Um, and then we could get a new equilibrium being maintained, which is very, very difficult to reduce and stop, even if we completely stopped emissions. So which scenario is likely to happen? Well, we don't know, and that's the point. We could argue that we're seeing, because as we see um, temperature increase with um, carbon dioxide emissions, that we're seeing this one here. And there is evidence for that. But at the same time, we don't know we're about to, if we're about to hit a threshold. So if these were the temperatures, for example, all of a sudden, this, this one could go up here and then shoot upwards. And we don't know, we can't predict that that isn't gonna happen in both cases. So that is why climate change is so difficult because predicting what will happen and having evidence for that is very, very tricky. And that makes it difficult to support the changes to stop climate change in the future.